Welcome to Uncaged, a show that celebrates thought leadership from today's top business leaders. The program provides a voice to amazing executives from around the globe who are shaping the world of business today and mapping the path to the commerce of tomorrow. Today, we're speaking with Dan Waldschmidt. Hey, Dan, how are you? Hey, thanks for having me today, Ben. <clears throat> It's great to have you on the show, Dan. Uh, Dan is the Chief Revenue Officer of Panzura. Panzura is a very exciting company. I think probably should be noted they are on the Inc. 5000 list of America's fastest growing companies. But broadly, they are in the hybrid multi-cloud data management space. And if you're in business, you're definitely in the cloud today in some form or fashion. And we'll talk to Dan on what Panzura is doing that's differentiated from its competitors and really they have the best solution. But before we get there, Dan, tell us a little bit about yourself and your career. So I feel like I've been selling something since I was, you know, a young, uh, you know, maybe a young, young person, young teenager. Um, and uh, the, the, really cool thing about my journey from landscaping all the way up to, you know, selling appliances to technology to building and selling my own company. And, and of course, almost 25 years later now, CRO at Panzura, is that I've, I've, I've had this amazing opportunity uh, to like learn a bunch of different sales systems and work with some really incredible people, and then just watch how it all comes together. And I think one of the one of the big lessons I've I've taken away from that journey is, boy, the people in your organization are what make the difference between success or like almost getting there. So people is the key. And at Panzura, I mean, clearly you guys are growing quickly. So and building the team is critical. But tell me a little bit more about Panzura. I know that you're in a competitive space but you guys have very much of a differentiated solution. So Panzer is interesting because if you look, you know, if you look at our website, it says hybrid multi-cloud data management, right? And so a lot of words in that, uh, a lot of buzzwords. But what's interesting is that enterprises are storing data at an accelerated rate. And, and these are PowerPoints and marketing files and, you know, voicemail messages and, and pictures and videos and corporations need to not just store stuff, but they need to be able to figure out what it is and where they put it. The analogy that I might give you, Van, is, is kind of like Christmas or Thanksgiving. You know, you go up to your attic or your crawl space or whatever that closet is, and, um, you know, your spouse says, go get, get all the holiday stuff and bring it down. So you have all these boxes. Either, sometimes you're lucky and it's a clear Tupperware and you can kind of peer in the side. Sometimes it's like that green box with the lid that snaps down and you're like, what's inside this box? <laughs> Wouldn't it be cool if someone on the outside of the box had a label, right? It said inside this box or, you know, things you're never going to use or things that you are really, really important and you should protect, right? Um, and, and so this sort of intelligence that, you know, instead of opening up every lid and looking inside, uh, we know how frustrating that is for Christmas. Imagine if you were doing that for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of files every day. And mm -hmm. that's what most enterprises are doing, so struggling to figure out what are the files, what's most important, is is there some sort of um, hack or ransomware embedded in one of those files? Like what's dangerous, what's good? They just don't know. Um, and so uh, the reason why we're disrupting this industry is by providing security, visibility, and control inside of a space that hasn't really be, been reinvented in, in, let's say, 20 years span. Mm, I like that. I know that there's a lot of focus, you know, if we look at the broader trends in the space on security, and that's certainly something that you guys have excelled at. Tell me a little bit more on that side, and then we'll get into these other components as well. So security is important. It's hard to focus on visibility or control if you can't feel safe. It's that whole, you know, hard to sleep at night if, you know, there, you don't have the alarm system and the doors locked. I mean, just the basic essentials. Make sure the windows are shut, right? Let's do some things to ensure that we can sleep a little bit easier at night. Believe it or not, modern CIOs don't automatically walk into their job having all of those resources, right? And so what happens is um, they take a position, they take a job, 
where you know security is poor, visibility is poor, control is poor. And before they can think about maximizing their utilization of the cloud, they just have to get comfortable with where are my vulnerabilities? What could possibly go wrong and where? And so security is, you know, you have to start with security or nothing else matters. I agree. I also love that point that you raised on visibility, because I find that any clarity that you can have on that is always helpful for a wide variety of reasons. So I love that Panzora is helping in that space. But I wanted to dig a little bit deeper, Dan, on your role as a chief revenue officer, because we're in an interesting moment right now. You know, we're coming out of the pandemic. There was kind of a surge of activity, I'd say probably in your space, a lot of activity during the pandemic. And now we find ourselves yeah. in another interesting market. Tell me how you guys are thinking about sales and revenue and you know building that type of team. We're finding that there's lots of news about economic downturn. There's lots of stories about the possibility of things going sideways in the economy. It hasn't impacted us, um, knock on wood. And it hasn't, it hasn't impacted many of our customers. Um, and the reason being it's, it's like storage is a little bit like toilet paper. I mean, you 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 know you, you're always going to need it, right? And and uh, you hope you don't run out. Bad things happen. Um, by the way, that the analogy that I'm saying out loud might need to be refreshed. <laughs> but um, you know, uncertainty delays or demotivates your team. It also demotivates your customer, your ideal customer, your, your, that profile, that person that you know you can provide value for. So credibility, confidence, and a clear path forward, a series of easy, non-frictional steps um, is, is so important to getting customers to say yes. There's, there's really, if I had to summarize it down into two things, I say, to our, I say to our teams all the time, number one, we can't let our customers fail. They fail, we fail, right? It's not good enough to say, oh, we told you what to do and you didn't do it, it's on you. It's actually on us. So number one, customers can't fail. Number two, the product has to work. Mm -hmm. and, and what I mean by that is, you know, enterprise solutions are not cookie cutter. They require creativity. They require an in-depth knowledge of the environment and the factors in which they play. And so it's, again, not good enough to say, here's a commodity platform, go make it work. You have to tailor the solution specifically for the needs of the customer. So where we're seeing action, where we're seeing customers respond is when we say, look, we're not going to let you fail. It, it, it's in our ethos. We, we just, we can't let you fail. We're not going to let you fail. We'd rather walk away from the opportunity and you than this then to just to let you flounder. And mm -hmm. then two, we're going to make our solution, which is already best in the world, best in class, we're gonna make it work for you. Because it's great that you hear a testimonial or referral or case study or workload, some sort of story about somebody else. It's great for them. You care about you. So let's make sure you get the success, sort of the bragging rights, right? That we've been telling everybody else about with some other referral. These two things we've seen really drive forward progress, even when market conditions are a little bit flaky and weird and uncertain. CIOs have enough information and they have the, the belief that even if there are things that nobody knows, could be a calamity tomorrow, right? right. Um, that not, none of us know about, they're with a partner who's going to over deliver. I really love that, Dan. I think that the broad insight of, of just stating uncertainty demotivates. And that's a brilliant insight because I think a lot of companies fight against that and just being aware of that, stating it, and then clearly outlining two amazing ways of being an excellent partner is just just a spectacular insight. So Dan, I mean, you got into the hot seat as a chief revenue officer at Penzora in uh, May 2020. That's uh, like right in the thick of the pandemic. And I'd just be curious to hear a little bit about your experience uh, over the last couple of years, maybe some insights and opportunities that came your way. It definitely was uh, jumping right into the middle of the fire. Um, Joel Osteen, you know, uh, famously says or says hundreds of times, "What you go through, you grow through." Um, and uh, certainly, as a leader, you don't have to grow from things. You, we all have that friend who like keeps making the same mistake over and over. 
I unfortunately uh, don't want to make the same mistakes too many times in a row. And so I'm trying to, you know, always learning and growing. I encourage our team to do that as well. What's cool about that is you don't need to be in an office to grow and level up. You can do it from anywhere. In fact, there's a bunch of fabulous technology that just got accelerated. Training platforms over Zoom, uh, uh, coaching programs over Zoom, empowerment programs on mobile devices. And, and, and so one of the, one of the things that um, you know, I got dialed in on early on, right in the middle of COVID, was productivity. How were we using our time? Um, frankly, I saw my team working too many hours, um, mm-hmm. spending too much time in front of their, their screen. Sometimes we have to shut that off, or sometimes we just have to be silly, tell a joke, grab a drink together, hang out on these, on these video channels, rather than make it all about that next video meeting. One specific uh, habit that I, that, I, that I tried to create for myself and also instill in my team is this 15-minute gap. So after every video meeting, taking that 15-minute gap, mm-hmm whether it's a bio break or just another uh, cup of coffee or just to stand up, move around and breathe. Um, I'll tell you, it, it puts a fresh wind in yourself when you're just looking at the camera all day. Uh, it can take a, a couple, couple seconds to, to, uh, to, 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 to refresh. Having come out of COVID, right? Oh, it's good to see people face to face. I mean, there's so much more, right? You can do band where you feel and hear and sense and rather than just do it over a video. But um, I, I think, I think being over a video taught us a lot of lessons about what's possible. We set all these conditions for ourselves, about what we can do, what we should do. And then life forces us to level up and change and adapt. It's pretty mm-hmm. remarkable how quickly all of us got into this new way of meeting and, and doing business. And I know that uh, the idea of balance is important to you. You clearly have excelled in business. You also have a really interesting personal story, you know, that you're the 10th person on the planet to complete the Run Everest challenge. I would be remiss if I missed asking you a little bit about that. I mean, what was that like? Um, tough, <laughs> tough. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, what made it even a uh, little more challenging was that I actually had a, a bit of a self-imposed time buffer because I actually had some business meetings. I had to hop on a flight, um, you know, at, at a certain point. And so I couldn't just like let it hang out. I had to go push, you know, hit the summit, hit, look at my watch, turn it off and then realize, Hey, we had achieved the mark. Um, but, um, you know, running 29,000 feet straight up, 29,009 feet. Don't want to lose that last nine feet. But um, 29,000 feet. Because you felt up. it. You felt those nine feet. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It feels a lot like what we do in sales, right? It, it's a lot of uphill, but then there are these moments when you get to the summit where you go, we did it, right? We're here. We pulled it off. And of course, that's what makes it so, uh, so much worth it. Yeah. Well, Dan, I mean, we're in an interesting moment now. You made it through the pandemic, and now here we are at the end of 2022 and find ourselves with a lovely inflation and lots of nasty (laughs) topics like recession peeking around. I'd just be curious to hear what's your thoughts on all of that and how you guys are making your plan for the near future. You, You have to plan for the worst case scenarios. You just do. I'll say this privately. But publicly, our message is clear. It doesn't matter what happens in the economy. It it doesn't really happen what happens. It doesn't really matter what our competitors do. We're playing our game. We're running our course. We are disrupting and innovating in our way. Let's keep doing it our way. If you go to panzer.com slash culture, you'll see kind of the four, or sorry, five key values that we own. Four of them are awesome. One of them is like the awesomest, and it's this, bring your weird. You'll see people with T-shirts that say, bring your weird. So if we claim weirdness as one of our cultural values, let's, let's continue to be weird. Let's lean into that, and let's, let's just accentuate the things that make us great. I find that when we're chasing fear-based solutions around what the economy is doing, what inflation is doing, you know, what big corporations are doing. We need to be aware of these things. But when we change our strategy constantly, 
based on what everyone else is doing, we lose out on that special something that makes us attractive to these large companies in the first place. Mm-hmm. If we can own who we are, if we can lean into it, really you know, claim that space as an innovator and a disruptor, a little bit weird, then at the end of the day, these large corporations go, wow, it's a breath of fresh air, right? To be able to do business with someone like Panzera. Yeah, I mean, I'm very excited about the Panzora story. And I think you hit it right on the head. No matter what's happening in the world, you're going to need cloud data management, especially in a world that has machine learning at the center of it and more and more insight-driven solutions. So Dan, thanks so much for being on Uncage today. If someone wanted to reach you, where's the best place to find you? You can find me on LinkedIn, you know, Dan Waldschmidt, Google, but there's a lot of people who are connected to me, you know, connect with me. I'll, I'll, I'll connect back. Um, you can send me an email. I think my email is public uh, for, for anyone searching for it. It won't take you that long. Um, I love to be surrounded by people who want to be the best in the world. So if that's you, look me up. Let's connect. Let's meet. Let's see what the next steps for you uh, and your career might be. Excellent. Well, there you have it. Dan Waldschmidt, Chief Revenue Officer at Panzora. Thank you so much for being on Uncaged Day. And look, we look forward to having you back. Thanks, Pat. Appreciate Cheers. it.